Morning, YouTube. How do? Trevor Naif, something or nothing. Hiking on Exmoor today. Somewhere different. Somewhere different. Oh, we love Galavant and Dennis Bike. But yeah, we thought we'd uh, try a bit of Exmoor today. We said we'd go to Exmoor one day this year, and this is like the last hike of the year, isn't it, Naif? Going into 2018. Well, 2017's been cracker. Thank you for joining us, if you have joined us this year, which most of you have, as we only had like 27 subscribers before 2017, didn't we? Right, we're at a gate. Do you think we've got to go through a gate, Nave? I don't know what we've got to do. Should we uh, put the camera down and have a look at the map? Have a look at the map. Have a look at the map. It looks like the track goes around the outside of this field. See, there's the gateway Isn't through. There yeah, we, look, you see that black line? Thin, the solid black line denoting yeah. the outside of the field. Yeah. That's the gateway to the field. Yeah, but we haven't walked that far. We've literally walked a couple of millimetres, haven't we? No, it's a couple hundred metres there, isn't it? So we're over here somewhere. Maybe it's here. What, so you think we've got to go down around that? No, 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 no. Either way, I was going to go through the field. Oh, Should we just open the gate and go through the gate? <laughs> we're in. You know, let's just follow this track, I reckon. Follow the track. So anyway, come to Exmoor. We've come to Dunkery Gate. And we're going to go up Dunkery Beaton, which is the highest point on Exmoor National Park. It's not as cold as it was last time, is it? No, it isn't. I've wrapped up a bit. I've got my woolly hat. Do you like my new hat? Loving the new hat. Um, didn't know how cold it's going to be out here, but now we're walking, it's not that cold. It's a bit blowy by the car. I think when we're up high, it's going to be a bit exposed. Yeah, I think it will. I've got my new rucksack. Don't know if you saw the videos that I put up last time. Giving this a try. Slashed two kilos off of my uh, my weight. Nath, tell them, are you proud of me? Have you uh, still got the uh, bug spray and the suntan lotion in there, Trev? Yes. Yeah, good. Well, this is the thing, I don't... The 4th of December. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't put it in there now, I'll forget it when we go out. Oh, so I've got to get down here, little stream pass open, get over to there. Right, the first thing I did was like hold on to this. Yes, I don't think that's going to take a wigs. Just trying to get a, a feel for where we're navigating here because the track and the supposed path we're trying to follow aren't immediately obvious. We've crossed the stream that we've identified on the map, but it's knowing roughly how far up and down the stream you are. On the map, there's a boundary line that's running pretty much at 90 degrees to the river, and then it looks like there's a uh, some sort of access point where the uh, path we're meant to be following heads through that boundary. I don't know if you can see this. There is said gate. So it's always a reassuring sign when you're navigating, when you find exactly what the map's telling you you're expecting to see. We're on the right path, so that's that's reassuring. Um, so we're going to follow this and, uh, you know, probably get lost. Some signs here, Dunkery Gate, Draper's Way. So straight on is the way we're going. 
stroke as well? Uh, no. So we've come down from Dunkery Gate. Yeah, Draper's Way is this one, which is not where we want to go. Spangate Lane. So uh, we'll go that way then. Okay. Got to get over here now. <laughs> oh, easy. There's a little dam. They got they got beavers back in this part of the world. Did you know that? That right? We got beavers in this country. I've devoted a lot of my spare time to try and observe beaver in its natural habitat. Never lets me get very close. I almost feel overdressed. I feel a bit hot. I haven't got many layers on, but what I have got is big layers and a thermal vest. Much. Cold when we got out of the car, but now down here oh. it's lovely and warm, isn't it? Yeah. Got a slacking off my uh, shimagi and roasting my head. Yeah, I'm roasting. I can't take my hat off because I forgot to shave my head last night, so my boldness is showing. It's all right having a bicked head, you know? But when you let it grow a few mil over the course of a week, maybe three, four days, it really highlights where you have and haven't got hair. It makes you look 10 years older. <sighs> oh, I think this bag needs adjusting so it's not quite right. Seems to be a lot of weight at the bottom of my back. Is that because you packed all the weight at the bottom of the bag? No, I don't think so. Most of the weight's in the two side pockets. <laughs> uh, just need adjusting, I think. It's just not sitting right. Over, overall, though, how do you feel about the pack right now? Yeah, it feels all right. I mean, I've had to keep the other one for spare. I've actually repaired the other one after I bought this. Bent the top of my pack back. Bent it really strong I am with my man muscles. So it clears my head. Fine. But it was heavier. Oh, he's heavier. That didn't bother me. Weight never bothered me. Man, it's f***ing, you know what I mean? But yeah, I'm going to have to have that as a spare to take all my camping gear and that, because I don't think it's going to fit in this bag. Well, uh, you know, man can never have too many packs, yeah? Well, exactly. Pack for every occasion. <laughs> So uh, we were just walking along engrossed in a conversation, stopped paying a little bit of attention to what we were doing, and uh, we're just marching on following this track. We come down to this gate here, and uh, we just walked through it. We got the other side of the fence, and I was like, hang on a minute. We just come back to the gate and looked at the map, and uh, yeah, we were just literally almost 180 degrees out of where we actually wanted to be heading. That gateway there is where we were heading through. 180 degrees around the other way. You can see Trevor in the background there. That track up the side of that hill there, that's where we actually wanted to be going. It is that easy, people. So, um, yeah, just keep your map in your hand. Don't take your eye off the ball. And uh, hopefully you'll be all right. But if you do want to follow our footsteps, don't go through that gate. Go up there, all right? See the sea over there? Those moody old clouds moving across quick, aren't they? This has been a bit of a slog, as Nathan says, a thankless slog. A lot of straight line is running out of uh, views, especially now we're getting up in the cloud a bit more. So by the time we get up to uh, Dunkery Beacon, 
where the views are meant to be fantastic, you're supposed to be able to see the Brecon beacons from up there. We're not going to have anything to see. <laughs> That's just the way on. Well, we've come up the path, that track, and we've hit a road. Now we've looked at our map. There should be a crossway somewhere where we start to take a bearing to head up to these, this high point over here with Robin Halcairn, Joni Halcairn. So we assumed that that track was this one we was on. But we should hit the crossway there where the two tracks pass before we hit the road. So now we wonder if we've walked up this track here, round the corner and hit the road there. We'll have a look on our view ranger, just make sure that's where we are, shall we? Yeah. Exactly there. Exactly at that point, aren't we? Yep. So we get on the road and walk up there and then back out onto that route and yep. try and get up onto there. So we passed the car park, there's another lay by here. There's a track going off there, we're looking for a track going either way across the road. You gone all mute, we're like Penn and Teller now, are we? You're the silent one. Meat and jerky. He's got like... meat in his mouth. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm always focused when I've got meat in my mouth, yeah? Here. Yeah, at the end of our path is Brockwell. Do that, should us. Yeah, do we want to take a bearing? Well, we can do that where the next path cross. Yeah, and they cross down here, don't they? Yeah. Okay. That's where we've got to go off the track. Okay. So sort of the more um, me and Trev come out and do this, the more I find myself watching other people's videos, trying to learn and improve my experience through lessons learned from other people's experience. Watching a video the other night about going stoveless. So we've been using the Jetboil, the Jetboil Zip, which I quite like, and before that I had the MSR reactor. See him back there, <coughs> doing his monologues, talking about a camping stove. It's quite clear that I can create something myself. It might not be as effective in the wind, you know, it might not be as efficient on gas, but sometimes you've got to weigh up the pros and cons. The old knife. He f***ing waffles on for like 20 minutes to get to the point. Uh, I edit it down to about 30 seconds. Uh, that's where I should get paid for my job, editing Nafe's monologues. Is the stove totally necessary on a day hike? Interesting question. He starts the conversation and he goes and they're off on a tangent and he comes around and back. So I edit his works by finding all the key points he's trying to make, putting them in the right order. Would a flask have been more apt on this occasion? You know, the flask itself is going to be heavy, it's going to contain liquid, you'll probably want to bring water as well. So I can hear him back there now and I'm thinking, yeah, it's all right, you talking all this, I've got to, I've got to edit this. I don't always reply to the messages that are sent on our videos, uh, I've got a very sort of small footprint when it comes to social media. Sometimes I, <laughs> I go through it and I think, I don't really know what you were trying to say there, Nate. We'll leave that for now. When you guys get to see the videos, it's the first time I get to see the videos as well. I don't see the videos until Trev's finished editing them and putting them up online. Sir, uh, editor's rights. My bastard. Happy to read the He's going to walk right on then. We got a cross. Right, Nave, you got to finish your conversation. Talking to myself roughly. We've got to take a bearing from here. Try and find out how to get over to the cairns up on that hill. Yeah, so we want to go over there, don't we? No. We've walked from there to there. So that we want to get over there. Oh, so that's. Okay. What do they say about pride? Off pride. We're not getting any better. <laughs> well, it's a shame the older uh, mist come in. Who's going to show you the views from the highest point on Exmoor? Not going to happen now. A bit colder now. I was hot earlier, thinking I bought too many layers, but. Now I'm glad I'm wrapped up. A bit more exposed up here. Come on. There's all sorts of crisscrossing of 
tracks. The problem is, is we can't see the obvious points in which they uh, start and stop to identify them. So Trev's going to take a bearing now to try and hopefully confirm we are where we think we are. We come from here, we found that, we've crossed here, now there's a track going across. So we think we're on that, which should take us up to this high point, to the cairns. Well, there's a cairn we're approaching. God, it's cold up here now. It's a bit breezy, yeah? Feels a bit but the views are something else up here. Oh, mate, yeah, it's breathtaking. There's another mound over there. So this is Robin Howe Cairn, I'd say. Robin Howe Cairn. I'd say that over there is Jenny Howe Cairn. We're going to have a look at that in a minute as well, shall we? Yeah. Ready, underneath? So oh. in on the Another one of the moors. We're going to sum it with nothing, that one over there. Why we're here, isn't it? It'd be rude not to, wouldn't it? This is what we're about. All optimistic and happy as always. Made some cock ups with a map and compass. Shouting our heads off in places of outstanding natural beauty. Yep, that's us. Check, sum it or nothing. Now taking a direct route across. I don't know what this is. stuff is weird. It's all ground. But we're walking across it. I don't know how Trev feels about it, but I'm feeling a cup of coffee coming on. This is Joni Howe Cairn now. We just walked across between the two over there. Didn't notice this track. Don't know if this cloud is in for the day or not. Hopefully if we stop here, have a drink, by the time we get over to Dunkery Hill, the highest point, it might have cleared. You never know. Fingers crossed, ain't they? We got her, haven't we? We got her, haven't we? Side point, innit? Summon on your thing! On X more. On X. So what I've got going on down here, coffee, three in one, in here, and a galaxy hot chocolate and make me own mochaccino. And then down here. Pepper Army. Got them uh, sun bites again, have you? Yeah. The main reason being, when we go on an overnight hike, I buy a bag of like trail mix with cranberries or something in it, and then I'll divide it into Ziploc bags, and then I'll allocate myself a certain amount for each day. But if we go for a day hike, and I do that, the rest of it just ends up going to waste. Mm. And if, you know, if there's one thing I hate, it's wasting food, like, you know? I haven't looked to see if they're more expensive to buy it like this, but that is a convenient size pouch that I can eat without wasting any. I love cranberries. One minute, 15 seconds for a yes or no answer. <laughs> Dude, good. <laughs> oh, the rain's come in, the wind's come in, the temperature's dropped, back on, move. Make our way over to Exmoor's highest point now. I reckon we're here. Go across there to Kit Barrows. Yeah. Something else to see in it. Uh, basically, at its narrowest point, it is less than 300 metres across as it tapers up towards Dunkery Beacon. Yeah. So as long as we keep heading up, we can't help but pass Kit Burrows Cairn on our way up. You happy with that? Yep. Yeah. So is there a track we're following here then? Or? Yeah, well, it's sort of vaguely. Mm. <laughs> 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 it just feels a bit more like 
some moorland walking across here, keeping off that road. So far, it seems a bit more solid underfoot than Dartmoor Dog, even in boggy patches. It seems that there's a bottom to the bog, you know what I mean? So, uh, we've wandered up from the road on a bearing, found some rocks buried under some gorse that may or may not be the cairn we're looking for. I don't know if this is a cairn or not. It seems a bit weird. So we're not entirely sure where we are, so it's very difficult to take a bearing, but we have taken a bearing. If we stood on Kit Barrows, it's saying southwest. So what we tried to do is make an educated guess, and uh, we're going this way. If we veer too left, we're going to end up at the road anyway, in which case we'll be able to find ourselves. Just keep going across then, do we? Of course, what we should have done, with it being poor weather, taken the known point of the road and tried to navigate as best we can with that. Well, I was just thinking to myself, um, you know, this sort of weather, this time of year on Dartmoor, actually, no, any time of year on Dartmoor, it doesn't matter, it could be the middle of summer, it could be the hottest day of the year, and you're still going to get piss wet through your feet, innit? But, I mean, we've just gone off piece, got completely lost and found our way back to a path again. Can, can you see any mud? anywhere my shins aren't wet my socks are dry it's i tip my hat to the people that planned exmoor not dartmoor <laughs> so now we found the path knife oh that's by now it's nowhere to be going to us i think my trousers are actually cleaner than when i sent off the set off they was yeah there was mud all up in this morning you've had a wash yeah <laughs> Coming in wet, proper wet. And that's good because we're getting up to the most exposed part of Exmoor now. So uh, yeah, we could do with the rain sweeping it. Can't really complain about the fickle moorland weather. It's the 3rd of December. We're up on Exmoor. And we're at the highest point on Exmoor, no less. Uh, you know, and it's not until this last sort of two kilometers that the weather's really set in. It's uh, so cold, the wind's so cold on the face. You know, it's been coming in on the right hand side. My whole right of my face is numb, but it is what it is. This is part of uh, year round rambling, like, you know. But uh, it's nice to get around the corner and see this. Dunkery Beacon, highest point on Exmoor. Look at the views! You can see the Brickens! It wouldn't surprise me if you can see Wales from here on a nice day. Unfortunately, today isn't a nice day. Sugarloaf Mountain. 52 miles, that's where we were going to go on the Brickens, wasn't it? Let's have a look up here. I was reading in a book, Between the Sunset and the Sea, that's the name of the book, and uh, all of this come about from a thing known as the Big Trespass, or the Great Trespass. Um, the slumps between uh, the First World War and the Second World War, people in busy towns that didn't have work, they used to take to the hills walking before all this equipment was readily available, you know. None of it had been sort of thought of because it wasn't a pastime, it wasn't a hobby. And all of the nice places to walk, all of the nice land up country was owned by sort of lords and noblemen, you know. And they wouldn't let the common folk go and walk there. It was only for people, you know, of the upper classes. So basically, 
uh, this one chap whose name escapes me. But basically, they arranged this big trespass, and uh, as a result of this big trespass, people started to take note, and then shortly after that, land was released to the National Trust, and national parks were formed in the UK. And, and uh, if it wasn't for those people, this might not have happened. They were the trigger for it all. And then when you go into a shop called Trespass, it suddenly makes you think, I'm guessing that's where that name came from. shame now we have to come back here another day to see the views yeah we've definitely seen the weather we've seen the weather one, the view. Right, one of these paths i reckon will take us back to the card that one i reckon that one yeah after you amazing i just stepping down from there the wind's gone <laughs> Hello mate. How are you doing alright? Yeah, nice, nice to meet you. you. Nice to meet you. Uh, I'm Nathan. I'm Nathan. Um, you're Nathan. Oh, I'm Trev. <laughs> yes you are. Yes you are. It's good. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm Summit. Oh, I'm nothing. Oh, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> We're Summit or nothing. In, not in any particular order either. We, we take it in turns, don't we? Yeah. At, at worst. Anyway, we've just been on Exmoor. That was our Exmoor walk. Dunkery Beacon. Yeah. Exmoor's highest point. The views was amazing. It was amazing. Yeah, it was brilliant. There was a one time when like you could see at least 13, 14 foot in front of your face. Yeah. And that was that was great. Loved that. Yeah. Are you I'm starting to think about going back up look, there again? It's clearing. I'm gonna slap you. <laughs> it's <in the> blue sky. <laughs> now we're all the way back down. We've just come all the way down. We stopped halfway down and waited for a minute. It is not clearing up the top of uh, that peak. And uh, Trev is contemplating going back up. I'm contemplating going to a pub, having a pint and a shit. Oh, I would just sign off. What was you going to do at the sign off? Shake hands, touch elbows, punch fists, headbutt each other, and then f off. Is that right? I is that what you said doing? something this morning. You could do that in the sign off. Get out of the way of oncoming traffic? Yeah. <laughs> anyway. So this was Exmoor, this was 2017. Yeah, this is the last hike of 2017. Possibly isn't it? is, yeah. But it'll probably be the last video that goes up in 2017, so. Well, that deserves a... <sighs> yeah, something like that. Something like that. Something or nothing like that. Cool. So, anyone, you know what you do. You watch us, you like us, you comment, you subscribe. It means the world to us to know you're there. Yeah, we love your comments. Even though I don't ever reply because I'm ignorant as fuck. But Trev always does. I always tried to. Anyway, if I haven't replied, I didn't mean to. Please forgive me. Oh, we talk some shit. Don't yeah, we? my arms hurting. <laughs> I'll see you later. Bye. <laughs>